Carey. And uh, they recorded uh, a duet of Mystery Train with Chet and Jerry trading licks back and forth. Uh, what I've done is changed it around a little bit to make it be a standalone guitar solo tune that sort of has the complete flavor of what they were doing. So he played the melody up here like this. And then back to the figure. So. It starts out with this chord, which is a little bit awkward, but boy, it sounds great. That chord right there. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'll take it apart a little bit because it, it looks you know, very close. But it's this sound right here. I think you can see that well enough. And then I'm going to take my little finger and bar those two st strings over the top of it at the 12th fret. So like that. And that's only played for like one beat. That's just the very first note of the song. But to get that sound in there, it's, it requires you to do this. So it's a little tricky. It's a little bit awkward. But like that. So you just start out like that. And then very quickly, you shift these two fingers so that they're where they were like this. And you take that one away. And these two fingers are here on third and fourth strings. And then you're going to put this first finger back here on the ninth fret and go like that. So the first little move, which is awkward and could be tricky, is and at the same time you do that, you start your rhythm going. So it's only a few notes, but it's a lot, lot to do at one time, so you have to practice it. So, And then this slides forward to make the next melody in. like that. So. that and those notes are just in the chord and then you're going to take this finger off the little finger and you're going to put this finger here and go like that so all on the second and third strings and then the open E string and that by the way gives you time to get your whole hand down here to play the E chord that comes behind it so Repeat that same exact thing. And then it goes to B7, which is at the uh, seventh fret, this chord here. But I'm going to play not the whole chord. Usually, if you were holding down the whole chord, you'd put all these fingers on it like this. This is the way people learn to play this chord. What Chet did a whole lot and made good use of it is to not put this finger on because you're going to need that finger to play things up here anyway and if you have enough muting going on with your right hand you don't notice that that note isn't there and that's a pretty common thing to do so it makes it a whole lot easier to play this chord so so I'm going to play this chord and the melody goes I can slide or I can whichever way you want to do it which works for you Okay, and this little thing here can be altered a lot of different ways. You can go, whoops, like that, or go, go down, or go up. Okay, if you want it, if you're a bender, some people are benders, you can bend the note. I'm not a good bender on that note there, but if it, like that, you could do it like a, it takes me four fingers to bend it, so I don't bend it too good. But And then an A seventh chord, which uh, Chet used this one a lot. This is a very inexpensive A seventh chord. It only costs you two fingers to play it. That one, that's a, it's a real good sound, okay? So, there's the chord, and I'm playing this melody note, and I'm playing this melody note. So back to the E again. And the way that the timing works on this is I'm not playing it right on the beat. I'm going and then and then there's one but it's behind where one really would be and it sounds good that way. It's almost a quarter of a beat behind one but it's okay.
Okay, that gets us through the form of the song one time. Okay, and by the way, this thing at B7 repeats twice. It goes, it goes. And that whole thing repeats again. Because that's the way the song works. That's the way it was written. Okay, now for the first variation, we're going to go back and take off like we took off before, but the melody is going to be altered. It's going to go. Instead of going. We're going to go, it's kind of like instead of going up, the melody goes down now, so. And back to this thing, always the, exactly the same thing every time back here. So the melody goes. What I'm doing is I'm playing on the top string. Second string, third string, okay, so, and again, keeping the rhythm going the whole time while you're doing that, a little bit of a challenge. And then I play this chord, and this is a little bit different than the way Chet played it, but when I heard it, I liked it, so I kept it in there, so. So, and different little variations you can do on this too, but are any kind of way you want to alter this is fine, but there's the basic chord, and it's kind of a, an A sus chord. You know, like, it's kind of like that chord up here with open strings in it. it sounds real different. And then the tail of that is the same as before. I'm not going to repeat it, but I repeated it a bunch before. And so on. Now, so that gets us through the second time through of the song. Now, the third time through, uh, Chet and Jerry begin to take solos. And one plays a solo, and then the other one plays a solo. And we want to make this a, be a standalone guitar piece. So instead of having uh, sort of ad-lib solos in it, I wrote a little part that I put in it. I like it, and I'm going to show it to you. I think it completely fits. And um, it goes like this. And what it is is just triads. It's three notes. to E. So this shape, this shape, slide it down two frets, this shape, all happening on the second, third, and fourth strings by the way. I might finger the top string but I'm not playing it. A seventh, this chord, A triad again, G triad, an A down here, and I'm playing a little melodic thing with it, and then to E in the E pattern. So it sounds like, and I'm changing the rhythm too a little bit. Instead of doing this sort of backbeat rhythm, I'm doing the, this kind of, in other words, a rhythm like that. So. Let me play the right notes. Back into the rhythm. 